That right there is why I'm not a cat lover and why I don't feed straight cats. Your dirty ass paws walk all over my chair and then turn your nasty butt around and, and piss on my chair. So I found this whole calabasa and pumpkin squash that the old lady had hid in the back of the back of the cabinets underneath the sink. Started to get mold on the outside. Now on the inside is fine. But that's what you have to do. Every now and then, if you have a Filipina, you have to go through the cupboards to see what they've shoved to the back that's growing mold. Because they'll never go in there and purge it and clean it out. I have to do it. Folks, last night I made some chicken uh, spaghetti. Got a little ground chicken. I can't find the ground pork on the Robinson site on that grab mark. I made some chicken spaghetti that was absolutely delicious. Everybody loved it. Oh my gosh, talk about that grab driver. This little Filipino looks like early in the morning. Filipinas don't like early mornings, do you, baby? They want more sleep. Look at that, folks. Here you go, sweetie. She loves Papa Spaghetti. Mm. Well, folks, good morning. Spaghetti for breakfast. Leftover from last night. Cooked in the lodge, cast iron skillet, chicken spaghetti. It's absolutely delicious. I mean, look at these babies go to town. Fork, Jean. He don't even want to use his fork. It's so good. I didn't speak English, the boy don't understand yeah. Messiah. <laughs> you know folks, here on, here on my channel, what I do is, I just pretty much document daily life. And it's about what I do, where I go, what I think, my opinions. And so I just have to tell you like, you know, my daily frustrations as well. So yesterday I ordered some stuff from the Grab Mart. So anyhow, the kid, the kid sends me a message and he asked me something about the neighborhood that we live in. And I just put, replied with the address, some basic directions, you know, a major road, a landmark. So he knew where to go. All right, so it says your order's on the way and I'm watching the kid on the map. He goes way south to this neighborhood and I have no idea why he had it in his head that that's where he needed to go. Um, well, I, I, actually, I guess I do because part of the name of that neighborhood is uh, actually the name of our barangay. But that neighborhood ain't in my barangay. Totally different place. So anyhow, he goes way down to the south. I'm watching him I'm, and I'm like, where is this? Of course, I'm calling him a fool because I'm getting pissed off trying to, you know, like, what is he doing? I watch him, he goes down there and then he, 
pauses for a while. Hey, sweetie girl. Hey, sweetie girl. I'll play football just a minute, sweetie. Yeah, give Papa just a minute. <laughs> I had to play football for a minute. My little girl, when she wants something, uh, don't matter what else is going on in the world, she's a diva. You gotta stop and see what she wants. She wants to throw the football. Sandy, I'm watching this cat down there, and he's there for a long time. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? What is that, his house? What, do you go take a break? Getting some gas, ain't, but I look and there ain't, ain't no gas station, it's a neighborhood. So finally he texts me and he says, sir, I talked to the guard and he says this isn't the neighborhood. And at that point, you're like, <sighs> I reiterated to him, look, this is the main road, this is the landmark. And at the end, I'm like, look at your map. And that's what you wanna say to him from the beginning. When you hit send on your order, you don't want to have a conversation with the guy to talk him in here. That's what a map is for. That's why you have a map pin. You know, these guys have to have smartphones on the app to be able to be a grab driver. So you have a map. You know where I'm at. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. The last thing I said, look at your map. So I watched the kid and he goes up and he stops at this intersection where I know there's a trike terminal, right? And he's there for another few minutes, pausing. And then it's apparent what the kid's doing is he goes down, he asks the guard, no, this is not the place. Then he stops at a nearest tricycle stand and he's asking them where to go. And we had just have this conversation and I keep telling them over and over, because what else can you say? If you live off of Main Street at 2nd Street and you tell the, the, the kid a million times, hey man, it's Main at 2nd, there's a, you know, a, a, a big old office building there, whatever. How else can you explain to somebody to get to your place? You just have to keep telling them, this is how you get there. Oh, by the way, look at your map. So the kid starts heading in the right direction, apparently after he stopped and talked to these tricycle drivers. I'm like, all right, so he's finally coming in the right direction. He gets over here to our road and gets probably, I don't know, 300 meters away and he stops. Well, guess what's up there where he stopped? Another tricycle stand. And folks, the trike drivers here, you know, they know everything about everybody. So he's just stopping up there asking them. But then for some reason, he gets going in the opposite damn direction. He's going north, he needs to come south. So I'm sending the messages, hey man, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way, come back the other way. So finally, it clicks and it says your order's been delivered. You know, and I don't know if the app does that automatically, like when you get in close proximity or he has to hit the button. Anyhow, it's, it shows delivered. I'm like, what is going on? Come on, man. So we sit there longer and longer and longer. And it, it's sort of grayed out at that point. So it looks like the order is over. I'll say it was another four or five minutes before the dude finally gets going in the right direction, pulls up, and I told fucking mom, I said, you gotta you got deal with this kid. I, I, you know, my patience is, is gone with the kid. You gotta go out there and get it. So she goes out there and the kid says something like, oh, uh, you know, they, they said I couldn't go this way. Just something totally off the wall. What, what do you mean you can't go this way? You can't go into, into a neighborhood? What? Just a flat out bullshit excuse slash lie. So I sat there and I evaluated it and I said, you know what? I feel sorry for the kid, but as the customer, it's not my, my problem. The ease of an app is to order, hit send, and it shows up. You don't wanna have to carry on a 30 text message volley and talk to a guy eight times to talk him into getting to your house, which is right on the map. It's right on the map. We're not in her village where you're trying to explain to a guy you know, take the first dirt road to the right. When you see a bunch of goats, turn left, and then you'll see a big carabao, and it's the third bamboo hut on the right. No, this is a this is a city. Addresses here aren't perfect, but when you're looking at the map pin and the guy's telling you the directions, and the map pin is on the fucking street that the guy's telling you, well, it's pretty clear. But and this isn't the first time this has happened. This happens 
I don't want to say all the time, but it happens, I would say 20, at least 25 to 30 percent of the time. And what I've come to the conclusion of is that these guys don't know how to read a map. And to have some understanding and some compassion, is it their fault? Well, a lot of these kids here, they didn't grow up with a smartphone or an iPhone. So it's not like from birth they were exposed to the technology. They probably grew up with a talking text. And when you have a talking text, all you know how to do is text. That's pretty much it, right? So, you know, maybe the kid, and he was a young kid, maybe he hasn't had a smartphone, but for a year, maybe he just got it because of this job. Therefore, he has no training on Google Maps or any other app using a map. Therefore, he has no idea how to read, read a map. And I don't know what the requirements are to be a grab driver. I don't know if they give them some type of map test or some type of training, but it's apparent to me that they need to give them some type of training and then some type of test. And maybe they do. Maybe the kid passed the test. How he did it, I have no idea. Yesterday, he had no clue how to, re how to read a map and simple directions to get, get to the place. And again, this probably happens 25 to 30% of the time. And then you realize that these drivers, this is what they do for a living, unfortunately don't, don't understand how to read a map. So anyhow, I just had to take, take a step back and not get mad at the kid, just have a little bit a little compassion and understanding. But at the same sense, grab when you're running a business and this is what your business is, click, 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 and the delivery is supposed to show up, you're hiring folks that can't read a map. And you're not providing them with some type of training or testing or checks and balances to make sure they know what they're doing. And if that happened to me, my address is pretty simple to get to. The dude's doing it on every trip. He's not looking at the map. He's just doing the call, try to get directions, text, try to get some more information, stop at the trike terminals trying to ask somebody. The dude's lost. I mean, he's absolutely lost. And he'll continue to be lost if he keeps doing that. That's his MO. And again, he's not alone. So yeah, that was my latest frustration with ordering stuff off of Grab and my conclusions, my suspicions. And again, you can't, you can't get mad at them. You can't get mad at them. It's just they, they haven't had any type of training. Just thought I'd share that with y'all. We'll make up a batch of pinto beans. I think we got this in our care package from uh, John and Maria. This has just been hiding in the cabinets. So I'm gonna soak them a little bit, wash them out and soak them. Then I'm gonna put them on a slow, a slow roll on a large skillet. The problem is they ain't got no piece of pork to go in them. I'm gonna have to run up to the market and get me a little piece of pork. You know what? I should make some cornbread too. I ain't falling for no one bananas in my tailpipe. I ain't getting burnt no more trying to get this thing started. You just pull one of them things out of the broom right there. Shit. Gotta turn the gas on first. Alright, let's start over. Here we go. Just easing beans over in there. Give it a little stir. Just cap it. beautiful today what happened can you turn around and do a little modeling for us wow so beautiful today baby i really love those shorts but where did you get those shorts which ukai ukai turn around let's see the back oh my goodness that's a beautiful unauthorized purchase, baby. All right, baby, go ahead and tell us about this show you watched last night. <laughs> no, you said you watched, just tell everybody, what kind of show did you watch? I watched Murder Murder. <laughs> you speak up a little bit, what, baby? I watched a Murder Murder. 
Murder, murder. Murder, murder? Killer, killer. Okay, usually she calls it a killer, killer. A crime crime movie, right? Yeah. Or is it a documentary? Yeah, documentary. All right, tell us what it was about, baby. Baby, I'm trying to make an award-winning YouTube video. I'm trying to interview you about this killer, killer movie you watched last night. Mama, they're crazy. Who's crazy? They're both crazy. What was the man's name? I forget, but the I forget what the name, the man name, but the girl name is Erica. Erica? Yeah. Where were they from? Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. <laughs> So Erica from Maryland was a killer killer. I was like, yeah. I, that's the happening in Maryland. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, can you tell us the, the plot? What happened? Maybe the other didn't know that. <laughs> Honey, They're I don't... in the YouTube. <laughs> Honey, just because I mentioned the word Erica in Maryland, I don't think anybody has any clue. Okay, honey. I'm gonna ask everybody in the comments. Okay, if you know a crime mystery involving Erica from Maryland, because she she does. I don't know if they really. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you, for example, my daily life, right? So last night, my wife watches this beautiful documentary, a crime mystery. And then she tells me about it. <laughs> oh, I watched this killer killer. Okay, what's it about? A girl named Erica from Maryland. Mm. Can you give me any more details? Um, yeah. Go ahead. I don't know if they're really in the Maryland. I, I just saw this on TikTok. <laughs> I need to watch it in the YouTube first. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you see this? TikTok. But I already researched in the, in the YouTube, but it's really close. Fatima, I don't know the first documentary that I've ever watched on TikTok. Matter of fact, I don't even know what TikTok is. But you're claiming that you watched a full-length documentary on TikTok? Not full, like half only that I watch in the YouTube. It's that real. It's real. It's real? Yeah. Okay, tell us what happened. Erica from Maryland. Ah! Yeah, the, the <laughs> and they, they're uh, like, <laughs> I just only said that they're both crazy. They're bored their life. That's why they killed somebody. <laughs> okay, so they're bored with their life and they kill somebody. <laughs> they chop chop their butt. The, the couple, the couple, the other couple, they chop chop their body. That, that, Take a picture like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. What? They're, uh, they're uh, like. <laughs> Honey. Okay, would it be better if you explained in Bisaya? Because a lot of the viewers, they have Bisaya wives. Can you ex explain just a little bit about this crime drama in Bisaya, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. They're crazy, they're crazy, they're crazy, they're crazy. They're bored in their life. That's why they want to kill the, the other people. Yeah. After they kill him, after they kill, they chopped up the body. Then they, this is the boy said, Take me picture, they take me picture, they like that, like like that. And then after that, the the other couple that they're engaged and they take a married or engaged like that, then they did the girl get the ring they put in their necklace. So they, they posted a picture on no, TikTok? Not, not in the TikTok. <laughs> that's not no TikTok before that's a uh, 1990, but I don't know what's the, what year that 
This no is, TikTok before. This is before yeah. prehistoric TikTok. <laughs> no TikTok before. That's old. <laughs> That's old murder. Like a 1990. Okay. The research that I. Alright, babe. Thanks for telling me about this. Now I'm, I'm sort of interested. Erica from Maryland, a killer killer. Before TikTok, but they want to take a picture. You ever heard of a game called Telephone? Did you ever play Telephone? Like you tell somebody a secret and then they tell somebody a secret and then... No? That's not a secret. That's already in the YouTube. That's a murder, murder. I just tell you that... Like that I watch um, Mer Killer Girl last night. Then you... Okay, so I'm cheese mosa because I asked what it was about. Yeah. So next time when you say I watched the killer killer, I'm just so, supposed to say, okay, good. Well, I'm. Well, I. Anything else, honey, before I stop the interview about the crime drama you watched last night or the crime documentary on TikTok? Not, honey, I watch it. I I seen the TikTok, so I cry. I I like that. It's real like that. So I I research in the YouTube. So I watch in there. It's real. <laughs> Anything else, baby? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> baby you... If you don't want to listen. So pretty today, baby. I really like those uh, shorts that you got on. Are you about to listen to the roosters? Do I need to stop the mm -hmm. camera? This one, huh? Folks, anytime she calls a village, I refer this to one, it huh? as listening to the roosters. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. No, oh, she was on TikTok. I thought you were going to call the no, village. No, it's a YouTube. True crime. Oh, true crime. That one. They take a drug, that's why they're crazy. What kind of drugs they take? I don't know. <laughs> what, what kind of drug do you take, baby? <laughs> huh? Rice. The Tuyo with the Tuyo? Yeah. The rice. Rice is a drug for you because if you don't eat rice in one day, it's like you you didn't get your shabu. <laughs> now folks, when I talk about there's a communication gap between me and wife number two, I just let you witness that. I mean, this is an ongoing battle, it's a daily battle, uh, with she and I just trying to communicate. Again, I'm not making fun of anybody. Because, in actuality, she speaks three languages where, well, I guess I can't compare it to myself because I speak a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of Thai. But, most people from the West, in America, you speak one language, right? She speaks three. And so you can't really fault her that, that her English is not perfect. But, you know, the thing that I'm trying to convey to everybody is that you think everybody in the Philippines speak English, and that's not exactly true. They speak English at a, a varying proficiency level from person to person. It varies from great to zero. And so, 
if you're considering moving to a country or moving to the Philippines because they speak English here, you have to take that with a grain of salt. It's not that easy. You can't say, oh, they, they speak English in the Philippines. They prefer to speak Tagalog. Down in Visayas, they speak Visaya. The documents are traditionally in English, unless it's at the barangay level, they'll, they'll be in Tagalog. So anyway, I'm just trying to illustrate everyday life based on my own personal experience dealing with my own old lady here. That's a, that's a typical conversation. You know, last night I watched Killer Killer. Oh yeah, what it was about? Erica from Maryland? What? I don't want to tell you. Why you don't want to tell me? Do you want me to give you another chance to tell me about Erica from Maryland and how they killed a bunch of people? Or should we, I, the better thing is I just have to watch it, you know? Normally, that would not pique my interest, right? I was just like, okay, whatever. But being that we just sat here and talked about it for 30 minutes, I'm gonna watch that tonight. <laughs> if she can find it. Do you think you can find it again? Honey, if I research Erica, Maryland, well, maybe it will. Shit, I don't know. Erica, Maryland, uh, serial killer. Maybe it comes up. Maybe it will. Baby, no, no, no. I had on my UFO investigation. At the start of the third century BC. You don't believe me. Is this from here? Yeah. Are you sure? This is a very law abiding county. You don't have this kind of thing. I cannot explain all Action! Stop! If you had something else you wanted to add about the the crime mystery you watched last night? <laughs> what? You said now you're not sure if they're from Maryland? <laughs> yeah, I quit. <laughs> because I watch other other crime crime, right? <laughs> well, maybe they're not from Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> where they're from. This is a big mystery, baby. Somebody gonna I, have I to need to watch again. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you didn't really watch it. You fell asleep. I watch. I watch. I watch it. I forgot where they're from. There. <laughs> I watch. I watch. I watch. Baby, do you realize you're stressing me out with your crime stories? <laughs> oh, you stress me out too. <laughs> Why you? <laughs> I need. <laughs> I need to watch it. Okay, so if you watch time. it again tonight, can you give us a full yeah. report tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I'll give. <laughs> but maybe I sleep again. <laughs> That's a certainty. Yeah, it's a nice thing. It's a nice game card. It's a nice game card. You what, baby? I like to watch like that. Why do you like to watch all the serial I, killer shows? I don't know. I like something. <laughs> I like to watch. I'm just... Do you know of any serial killers here in the Philippines? Yeah. Who? <laughs> honey. Baby, are there serial killers here in the Philippines? They have just, they have murdered. Yeah, but a, I mean, a serial killer is a person who kills many people. I know, only one. Here in the Philippines, they only, only. They only kill one person? Like that. One or two? Mm. <laughs> Honey! 
But the I want to watch in the America because they kill mainly like they're crazy. <laughs> in here, it's not too much. Just one like that. So why do you think Americans kill many people? We have serial killers in America. They're crazy. <laughs> Then they want the money. They kill the, they kill their wife or husband. You, you ever dream about killing me? I just want to go in jail. Also, but if you could get away with it, you dream about it? No, <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Even when I stay out all night at Walking Street, you you get angry, right? Angry, but I don't want to kill her. Oh, move. <laughs> I know I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> Just want to watch, but I don't want to kill. Maybe you're watching to try to learn some techniques. Them pinto beans over there are smelling, oh my goodness, some kind of delicious. Chop up this garlic here. Typically when I go to the market now, I buy the garlic that's already peeled. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I hate peeling garlic. And number two, if you buy the peeled garlic, now, not that they're paying them any substantial wages, but it does create work for people. Somebody has to peel this garlic, and somebody has to pay the people to peel the garlic. So if I buy the peeled garlic, you're creating jobs. Or you can buy the non-peeled garlic, come back here and spend 30 minutes chopping the... Uh, what, baby? Huh? Down my voice so you can watch this killer, killer stuff. Honey, I'm trying to make an award-winning... Award World famous cooking show here, okay? I don't care about your killers from Maryland or wherever the hell they're from. She found the show. She said she wanted to watch it one more time, then she can give me a uh, a review, like a book report of what the hell is going on. So anyhow, sitting here drinking a little Jim Beam and Coke. Hadn't had any Coke in a while. She walked up to the market to get a piece of pork to go in my pinto beans. I sent her a text message that said, hey, pick up a Coke. She come back, she didn't have either one of them. I said, hey, where's my Coke? Where's my pork? She said, well, they don't have any pork. I said, okay, where's my Coke? She said, what? Because she left her phone here. So anyhow, she, she came back with no Coke. I just find it funny because Filipinos will hold on to their phone and be on that Facebook as much as they can, wait for their family to call, calling their family, so important. I snagged her phone this morning, she threw a big fit. Oh, I gotta call my mom, my mom's gonna call, blah, blah, blah. But then the minute she goes to the market, she don't even, I mean, walks up to the store here, she don't take her phone. So when the foreign guy who pays for everything sends one little text and says, hey, can you bring me a Coke? They don't get the message. It's not important. It's not important to communicate with the foreign husband or the boyfriend. It's only important to what I call listening to roosters. Every day, what do we do for hours every day? We listen to roosters. In other words, she's videoing with the village. I'm listening to roosters. Anyhow, so hey, she came back without my coat. I said, hey, where's my coat? What? I didn't take my phone. I said, okay, no problem. But I still need my coat. So I guess you'll be walking back up to the store to get my coat. Pretty simple. So I sent her ass back up there. You know what I mean? It's not unreasonable. 
You pay for the phone, you pay for the service, you pay for the load. And all they're worried about is talking to their family. They're not worried about my coat. Oh, no, no problem. Just go back up there and get my coke. Simple. I'm not angry. Pretty simple. See the stress I'm under, folks? You think it's all fun and games. Living with beautiful Filipinas. Anyhow, then lost my train of thought. Cutting up this onion. The onion's a little bit ugly. Got a couple little spots on it that don't look too beautiful. I don't really know what I'm going to make tonight. All I know is that she had shoved an entire calabasa, a pumpkin squash, into the very back of the cabinet. And every Filipino I've ever been with, they'll do this shit. They'll, they'll take food, shove it to the back of the ref, the back of the uh, cabinet, whatever. They forget about it until the foreign guy goes in there and it's growing mold. And there was mold on the exterior of this calabasa. Now, it's, the interior is fine, luckily. Yeah, but honey, the point is, you understand the point? If I hadn't went in there and started searching around, this thing would be there until the end of time. Just on your point. So we got to cook that. We got to make vegetables tonight. We've been eating the heck out of chicken wings, but that's just what I got on hand. And for some reason, this little market up here does not have pork. It's got fish, chicken, all the vegetables, but they don't, nobody's got pork right up at the end of the street. I don't know what, what that's about. Man, somebody needs to come in there with some pork. You know, folks, I try not to talk about this flow run, the omnivore, whatever the hell you want to call it now. I don't know if y'all saw that video clip of the CDC director. I forget her name. But the director of the CDC, the Centers for, I don't want to say it, but Control in Atlanta, right? The world's premier agency to, that's concerned with this stuff, or supposed to be, has admitted on video that the uh, does not prevent the transmission of the flow Ronda. At this point, it does not prevent transmission all it does is benefit the person who's receiving the uh the magic if that makes any sense hope it does Just try not to get the warning up at the top of this video but the head of the cdc has admitted it does not prevent transmission it only helps the person who receives it or supposedly helps the person who receives it in case they get the flow ronda. What does that tell you? A, it doesn't prevent transmission. B, it doesn't prevent you from getting the flow ronda. All it does is lessen the effects, reportedly, of the flow ronda when you get the flow ronda. People around the world ain't understanding this. People here ain't understanding that. Don't believe me, just go listen to the head of the CDC and also watch the video when they, when they ask her about how many people in the CDC have received the, uh, the magic. The folks, that should tell you something, should tell all you something. People who work at the CDC, if this shit was really concerning, don't you think everybody at the CDC would be the first people at the trough lined up, ready to get straightened out? But we've got a percentage of employees at the CDC that are saying, hell no. What does that tell you? But the rest of the world who know nothing about virology are lining up to get this shit. And people are making rules to say you have to get this shit. But the, I don't want to say majority, but a percentage of employees at the CDC don't want it. <laughs> don't you think they have a little bit more of the inside scoop than you or me or the average Joe? Res ipsa. Res ipsa is a legal term. It's, it's Latin. It means the thing speaks for itself. For example, 
if a person loses an arm in a car crash, he walks into the courtroom with one arm missing, you don't have to explain what happened to him. The thing speaks for itself. You can look and say, oh shit, the dude lost his arm in the car crash. He's obviously suffered some damages. Res ipsa, Latin. The thing speaks for itself. So if the CDC employees don't want to get this shit, I should tell everybody something. How the hell did they get to talking about this? I don't know. I guess because somebody sent me the clip of that bitch saying, <laughs> some, admitting that it no, well, she says no longer, but basically does not prevent the transmission. It's not a prevention. It's not a cure. All it does is lessen the effects when you get it. Not if you get it, but when you get it. I guess the reason I'm talking about it because I'm sitting here day something of a fucking bullshit liquor ban. Anyhow, at least I'm done chopping up my vegetables. Look at that, that's beautiful. I've got onions, garlic, tomatoes, and a big old bowl of calabasa. My goodness. Put a little bit more water in the pool today. The babies are loving it. Usually we just put a little bit of water because it's easy to clean out. They're just run. They use it as like a big slip and slide is what they do. But she left the water hose on today. Filled it up and they're loving a little bit more water. So we might fill the thing up tonight. But you know, it's got no filter on it. So every three, four days you got to clean the damn thing out downside to having a pool like this with no filter they are certainly having a good time in the sunshine today my goodness folks got wife number two up in the pool now in a bikini top that's beautiful right there my baby's in the pool got a beautiful filipina up in the pool my goodness baby milk does a body good wow got a see-through mm -mm. I should start looking at my old lady a little bit more closely. Someone told me long ago There's a calm before the storm I know it's been coming for some time I, I want to know Have you ever seen the rain? Honey, I've noticed that you look so beautiful today I've been drinking Jim Beam and Coke all day Still cooking them beans the beans take a long time. They take a lot of water to cook some beans. But I got them beans cooking in that large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. That piece of gear right there is made in America by the good folks down in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my friends. Folks, and beans are almost ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, loud. Look at that. Just pour them beans right there. Pour this large burn from my hands. Ready to go. Ready to go. Take a look at them beans. My goodness. My, oh, Lord, popping on my feet. And the folks, you brought up a good point. What I'm about to do ain't gonna fit in that large 3.2 quart. Cast iron combo cooker, but it will fit in this big ass Mac Daddy wok right here. What I gotta do? Put the, put the trivet on there. <clears throat> that joker's ready to rock. Got the heat going to it. Baby, give me some uh, oil down there, honey. Me back home, 
before I die. Put a little oil in here. This is, put it all in there. All right, baby. Throw the oil in there. Waka, 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 waka. This is Africa. Throw that in there. And I'm finna crank it up to 90. Now the old lady swears she don't want chicken tonight. But I got a big, huge plate of calabasa. I got onions, garlic, and tomatoes. Ready to go on this right here. Boom! Shaka laka laka. Boom, finesse. That's right, come and get it. Put that bag out of there, baby. There you go. You ain't never seen a motherfucking cook with a damn welding glove, but I am promise you, if you don't got a welding glove when you're cooking, you don't know how to cook. The heat ain't affecting me. I don't need no little towel, little dish towel. Hell no, I manhandle my shit right here. Look at that. Saute that up. And then I'm coming here with the calabasa. I'll give you a big preview if I haven't already given it to you. Calabasa, that's pumpkin squash. I'm gonna cook the hell out of it. Folks, I got pinto beans, vegetables, pumpkin squash. My God. I keep asking her, do you want me to cook up some chicken wings? She keeps saying no. But by the time I get done, I think she's gonna be like, Marquitos, can you make some chicken wings? Baby, I'll do anything to make you happy, honey. As long as it don't upset my girlfriends. <laughs> Look at that. Get that flavor going on. I want you to take a look at them beans. Did I already show you them beans? Oh, wow, them beans are gonna be absolutely delicious. Even though I didn't have a piece of pork to put in them, but that's not my fault. I sent the old lady up there and she claimed they didn't have any pork. Huh? I knew you wanted some chicken, baby. No, no, not the cube, not now. If you want the cubes, not now. Wait till I get this done with the calabasa, baby. Hey, the power of the welding glove when you're cooking. Hey, Gordon motherfucking Ramsey can't do that. He can't do that, baby. He can't do that. You, you can do that. I can do anything I want because I got a fucking welding glove. Ain't nothing broke. Well, folks, I want y'all to take a look at that. I tried to talk wife number two into putting some chicken wings in there. She said, no, it's vegetable night. She was tired of eating chicken wings. I said, all right, but it'd be delicious in there. So we're just sticking with straight up vegetables. That's mostly uh, calabasa, you know, pumpkin squash. The babies love it. But if we threw chicken wings in there, it would probably be absolutely delicious. But I understand, we've ate chicken wings every day for like two weeks. Got it, tracking. Now wife number two says there's too much water in that pot. I said there is not because I'm doing the evaporation rates on my head. I can do those algebraic physics equations in my head. By the time I'm done, it's going to be appropriately evaporated. Never question the king, honey. Guitars and Cadillacs, hillbilly music. That boy right there loves pinto beans, folks. Look at him, eating them like peanuts. And I'm going to tell you why. Because his daddy's from the backwoods of Mississippi. I grew up on a dirt road eating pinto beans and cornbread. Black eyed peas and cornbread. This one over here is too busy playing in the dirt with the dump truck over there. She's got a little plastic dump truck. You know, when I was a kid I had a, you know, rugged steel Tonka truck. Now they make them in plastic, but she loves playing in the dirt over there. That's what she likes to do, makes mud pies. The same as I did when I was a child. Life is beautiful, my friends. Working with the finished product, I told the old lady it needed one more cup of water. She said, no, it's done. And again, she didn't want to put no chicken wings in here. So all right, it's vegetable night. Come here, sweetie girl. Papa help you. Get up there, brother. You got beans and rice, everything nice. But the calabasa, they're gonna love it. 
folks, those babies right there, the sweetest children anybody could ever ask for. My goodness, I wish I had 10 more of these and 10 more of these. Mom! Yeah, I'll take 10 more of you babies. Fly on the bell hood to buy you your every young man's dream. Old lady says she's tired of eating chicken. It's a wee vegetable link. Mmm. Wow. That calabasa is delicious. I'll be honest with you though. If I had some pork chops in that calabasa, oh my goodness. Mmm. Take the beans and rice. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. I got the sriracha sauce. It's got to go on the beans. It's too hot for the babies. It's my aunt, it's sweetie. Man, everybody loves sriracha sauce, but especially on beans and rice. You gotta go with it. Mmm. Outstanding. <laughs>